ancient times, when the empire of the gods still dominated the western Zeblika, the land of Fenum was a paradise for all creatures to share. However, the downfall of the Southwestern Empire signified the conclusion of an era and the commencement of a new historical chapter, a chapter marked by strife. Fenum was the name originally given to this land by the indigenous Zebras. However, as the Kiran tribes moved southwards, Fenum was quickly forgotten and eventually replaced by a more well-known name, Zykeria. For centuries, the tribes of Zykeria engaged in continuous warfare, ceaselessly facing each other in battle. In 450, when the Kiri of the north were united under the way of fire, Zykeria still remained scattered and disunited. Conflicts between warlords, chieftains and petty kings kept the region chaotic and bloody for centuries. Throughout this period, a distinct identity began to take shape among the indigenous Dibras and the Kirin settlers. Regardless of their background, members of these two races came together to join their cultures and families into one. For those who respected and accepted each other's ways of life, they would probably refer themselves as the Metros. As the heart of kindness unites the different races and their ethnicities together, it also laid a foundation for the Kingdom of Bayan established in 500. As a tolerant and diverse nation, the Bayan Kingdom controlled almost half of Zykeria, its domain stretching from the Meliflume River in Kyria to the Lotus County, protecting all those who lived within its borders. However, when the matriarch of Kyria sent her armies to peacefully unite Baia and Zykeria in 550, everything changed. Though the brave Bayani did what they could to resist, violence was louder than words. The kingdom of Bayan's northern territory was falsely annexed by the commandery of Zykeria, and the remnants of the Bayani retreated to the city of Lotus. A new kingdom was established, the kingdom of Sinkin hoping to someday reclaim what had been lost. For the next 400 years, while the Blossom Center North was being assimilated into the Way of Fire, owned of a million's control, Lotus, the heart of the South, always remained steadfast in preserving its heritage. This situation did not change until Kyria enacted a silence in 903. Kyria's retreat from Blossom marked the start of a new era for Sinkin bringing the realm together as a unified entity once more. Yet, despite the regaining of long lost territory, the kingdom's problems were nowhere near finished. Though Blossom and Lotus shared the same blood, centuries of separation made it difficult for them to truly join together as one. A disconnect had formed between the two halves of the nation, one that was not soon to be repaired. The North practiced the way of fire, yet the South believed in the scrolls of the elders. While the North had rapidly developed its industries and trade, the South had been left out of all the advantages that the North enjoyed. The tension between Blossom and Lotus reached a boiling point in 953, the divides between them threatening to shatter their once unbreakable bond. Before things passed a point of no return, the merciful King Lithoi reminded both sides what a kind heart can achieve. He granted all creatures the right to believe what they will, leading the people of the nation to accept each other's differences. Without the chains of the silence and the aid of intellectuals who escaped from Kyria, sinking quickly became an industrial art in society. But with limited resources and Lankis barbarians continued to pillage, it was impossible for Sinkin to keep pace with the rest of the Welt. In 93, King Lithuia's final order before passing was to initiate a Nivarna project, an archaeological endeavor dedicated to discovering ancient magic left by the elusive civilization of the Southeastern Empire. The project's ultimate goal is to aid Senkin in its technological modernization by providing valuable insights into the past. But this gamble was unable to pay off, leading industrialization efforts to stall indefinitely. 
Following Lithui's death, the consort of the wise chose Rankin, the second child of King Lithui, as the new monarch. Unable to match his father's intellect and influence, he serves as a mere figurehead, while the consort holds the real authority. As the new millennium dawns, the kingdom of Senkin finds itself as a pivotal juncture. Challenges from both within and without the country pose a threat to the nation. Internally, the North faction, represented by Blossom, advocates for establishing a national identity with South and Kyria and changing Senkin into a republic. While the South faction, led by Lotus, wishes to stick with their cultures and keep the monarch as a symbol to unite the country. Beyond the borders, the vast, tainted Vermilion dynasty in the north has recently stirred. To the west, zebra warriors eagerly pursue their prey on land, while traders aboard ships, comprised of both ponies and griffons, approached by sea. The destiny of Senkin rests in the hooves of the people, the king and the skilled counselors within the council of the wise. Regardless of their choices, the creatures of Senkin will forever yearn for independence, freedom and the heart of kindness.